Very pleased now to be joined by our friends from Donnie and Dolly on Check TV every day from 10 to noon. And they join us here weekly for the crossover. It is Don Taylor and Rick Dollywall. What's going on, fellas? Well, uh, interesting game last night at, uh, at, at, at Rogers Arena. Can Canucks win. And Rick Tockett wasn't all that happy afterwards. I kind of yeah. liked it. I loved it. He's not letting them get complacent. You got to love that from a coach. He's honest, right? And, you know, after the loss against the Rangers, yeah. had really good things to say after a loss, and then they win, and he's not as happy. And you, you, I think fans right now feel like they can trust. They know he's going to be a straight shooter when he's talking about the team right now. Yeah. I, I um, Pedersen got three goals. I get it. He star of the game for a lot of people. I thought – talk at post game was was the star just his honesty about how he liked the win the one goal win against the predators last week much better than the three goal win uh last night talking about how his team didn't play that all that well but the importance of coming up with two points when you don't play all that well and then you know justifying his benching of of JT Miller I thought he was I thought he was uh, great last night can I ask you a question, gentlemen, and I'll pose it to you both. I hope so. When you win a game like that as a team, right, there's sort of two ways to take it. One is, you know, they're not all going to be Mona Lisa's, right? Good teams win the ugly game here and there, especially, you know, if they're going to keep like a five-game um, unbeaten in regulation streak going. So that's one read. That's the optimistic read. Good teams win ugly games sometimes. That's what we saw last night. And and the other one is, yeah. you know, sometimes early in the season, a, a hot team outperforms their their actual form, and a game like that might hint at, at the fact that these this early success is fleeting. What's your read? What which one of those two did we see? In previous years, uh, Thomas, I don't think they win that uh, that game last night. You know. Uh, look at uh, Demko's numbers, 936 save percentage, 1.91 goals against average. He's healthy. He's rested thanks to Casey DeSmith and the confidence the team has in him. They're not overplaying him. They're not behind in the standings. They don't have to overplay him. There's so many good things about the goaltending situation. Mm -hmm. Then I go to the confidence. When they gave up those two quick goals, Thomas, back-to-back -back 30 seconds, uh, that, that was not great defending. There was a lot of reaching around, reaching in in, in the new in, in the slot, and it, it wasn't good puck management. There was a lot of things not going right, but they found a way to a win. Good teams do that. I don't think they win that game a year, year and a half, two, three years from now, uh, ago, but I, last night I'm just looking at the makeup of this team. I'm looking at a well-coached team. I'm looking at a team that is getting rid of some of their bad habits from the past two or three years, and I see a team that is believing in their coach and doing what he is preaching. Yeah, it, it seems real. There was a stretch, I want to say in the third period, Guys, like a five, seven minute stretch where there wasn't a, a, a whistle. Yeah. And they they seem fast. They seem faster mm. than they've been in, in a long, long time. The other thing that makes me think it's real is because when Rick Tockett first took over last season, he talked about this sort of thing that the mark of a good team is when you're not good, you end up with a point or two. And that was the case. It's something that he's preached and, you know, something that they certainly did uh, last night. So, that makes me think that there's there's something there's something here. I don't think it's a I don't think it was a one off. The the, the speed line's interesting because Andrew Burnett, Nashville Predators coach, at the morning skate yeah. on Tuesday, said that the Canucks were the fastest team the Predators had played in the early going. Um, not something we've heard a lot about this no. club in <laughs> previous years. Yeah. Yeah, and that's you know maybe with Mikheyev not yet one hundred percent. If that if that happens, then it, that speed goes up a notch. But just that that sequence there, uh, guys, and you can help me as to when it exactly happened. It was there was minor hockey last night. There was a lot of stuff, <laughs> a lot of stuff going on in the Taylor household, Halloween, uh, yep. you name it. But I just thought, man, they they look way faster than they were last year. I don't know if it was it, it was just me, but that's yeah, it was... that, I didn't hear that from Andrew Burnett. But that's interesting. Maybe from around like 10 to 4 minutes left in the third period, Donnie, I think is the, the sequence yeah. you were talking about. You mentioned uh, Rick Tockett, one of the stars of the uh, of the night last night for his post-game comments. Also gets a lot of attention for a brief 
benching of JT Miller at the end of the second period. Only about four minutes. Misses a power play shift, another shift with his regular line at five on five. Then he comes back out for the third, ends up scoring a goal. What did you make of how Rick Tockett decided to handle that in game and what he had to say after the game as well? If you're going to say uh, in practice, remember Philadelphia, earn your F in ice time? If, mm-hmm. if you know, it, the hardest thing to do in hockey and all sports is treat everyone the same because there's guys making nine million, guys making one million, guys making five million. Everyone's got different rope to deal with. Uh, you know, some guys got a longer leash, some guys don't. If you're on the fourth line, you're very close to the press box, and if you're on the fourth line, you're very close to Abbotsford. And you know what? It's a different leash for different guys. But what he did last night was he sent a message to the rest of his team: I don't care who's making nine million or one million. That if, if, if you're going to take that many undisciplined penalties, you're going to pay the price. He, I thought it was a great message. Um, before last night, do you know that JT Miller only had four minutes in, in penalties in the first eight games? Mm-hmm. For some odd reason last night, and the unsportsmanlike penalty obviously doesn't help. But even the best players, the message was sent last night, you will be parked on the bench. And as a coach, I thought he did a great thing last night. Yeah, I I agree with that. And the unsportsmanlike call, you you, you know, as a leader, you just you just can't uh, do that. The other thing with his uh, penalties is, and coaches at all levels emphasize is don't keep your stick down, yeah. keep your hands mm-hmm. down, mm-hmm. and that that's that's minor hockey stuff. And he he was guilty of that. And Rick Tockett let him let him know about that. And Rick just talked about talked about the uh, the message. Look, you you sit down, Dakota Joshua. I don't know how much, and nothing against him. I don't know how much impact that ha- has. But you sit down, a guy making that much money, oh, yeah. with that kind of resume. Big that's time. that's a big time message. And then we hear today. I know um, J T. Miller didn't talk to the media yesterday, but he was the first player on the ice at practice today. So read into that what what, what you will. Yep. Do you guys care? And, at all? and he didn't do. Uh, 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 Thomas said, you know, J T. I, I know the Canucks have their reasons for not making them available to the media last night. And, of course, he was supposed to join your radio station this yes. morning. It didn't happen mm-hmm. as well. Um, but, you know, we had a big discussion on our show last week about referees should be made available to the media when they make bad calls. Um, you know, whether he was being he had an injury or whatever he was being dealt with, that was the only negative I, I, I saw last night. I, I, I thought JT should have come out and, and talked to the media. Uh, I think it would have been great. Uh, to get his views last night, but it didn't happen. Yeah, yeah well, that's what I, I was going to ask. ask. Do we care? Do you care? Yeah. What? Do you care, you care that about a player what? in that situation doesn't ad- address the, their game, an eventful game for them, with the media post game? Does, does it matter to you at all? I'll tell you why I care, uh, Thomas, and I'll tell you why. You heard uh, JT Miller on the podcast in the summer, and, and you heard his, his emotion, his, his, his honest feelings, his thoughts. JT Miller's a guy that I want to hear from. When times are not only good, but when they're bad as well. You know, you go back to the incident in Winnipeg where he slammed his stick, Mm. remember? And everyone got all up in arms, bad body language, blah, blah, blah. Well, he came out eventually and talked about it and gave a real rational explanation. So why couldn't there be one uh, for last night? I didn't mind it. Look, you and I differ on the whole uh, officials talking after games. But what's JT Miller going to say? Yeah. Uh, No, you disagree with me here. Uh, what, what, what I want to he hear from say? him. I, he's probably going to smooth it over. I think it. Look for what we do for a living. Him not talking is probably better, better <laughs> for a, a, a talk show, and hey. that we can criticize him for not talking. I didn't mind it at all. And, and Dodd, <laughs> Dodd, you guys, Dodd, listen. Yeah. You guys should make Thomas available after every uh, every after you get off the air to talk about all his bloody mistakes. He can't, he can't stop arguing with people on Twitter. That's all he does. He's constantly oh, I know. available. Yeah, I anything know. he needs to do it. But you, Johnny, you're, it, <laughs> you're right because if he speaks last night, then it's not a story today, right? Because you know, the, you look at the way Talkett mm-hmm. handled it, and he said pretty simply, "Yeah, I just thought he needed to sit." Then we talked about it. He's good. We're good. He's awesome. And if JT says something similar last night then it's done. He'll probably talk to the media today, but it's just one of those things where yeah. it maybe lingered a little bit longer in the conversation than it would have if he had spoken last night, I think. J- Jamie, let me let me just say this. When it comes to Drance, yeah. he got criticized by people watching our show today. We had a couple of texts uh, today oh. ripping into Drance out yeah. of nowhere. Yeah. You and I got lumped together because... <laughs> 
<laughs> because we've been calling for a rebuild, and this guy yeah. came up with this massive scenario and put that in your pipe and smoke it, Drance. Yeah, you're not on. You weren't on our show today. Maybe, maybe when I'm off Drance air. Gets, um, <laughs> Drance gets ripped in our text line all the time. People tag me on Twitter complaining about Drance. I'm like, I don't, I don't know what you want me to say. I don't, I don't control him. <laughs> hey, I like his I T-shirt today. I like his T-shirt. Thank you. <laughs> I, hey, look, I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. I, um, you know, I, I think criticism is part of the game. You know, in, in dealing with players and having dealt with players, I do think there are times where if you're too emotional to represent – yourself the way you want to represent yourself right we all know reputation takes forever to build up and no time at all to dash if you're not at a point where you can represent yourself in that moment the way you want to be represented i I do think you're better off taking 12 hours worth of uh of arrows for for not speaking than you are to speak um you know i think about miller in pittsburgh do you remember the pittsburgh um is everyone buying in and he sort of non-answered it and it became a thing you know, th- that's a mm. moment where you would be better off having not been available, right? Mm. Just as an example. Uh, whereas the rational answer he gave about the Delia incident, Dolly Wall, that was months later. Like, yep. months later. So, you know, if if he needed some time to compose himself, we, I don't know what the re- actual reason is that he didn't speak. I don't know, like, if, if he just wanted to be with family or, you know, and I do know that he hasn't cool paid off. attention to the 12 hours of conversation <laughs> about it since because oh. he's JT Miller. But, well, you know, I, I do think there's moments selectively where if you where you can be best off uh, not talking. But I also do think the, the message of accountability sort of requires also being accountable to fans, you know, through the media. So yeah. it, it's right. It's, I it's guess I guess he's I can see both yeah. sides. Yeah, I guess he's going to get there. You mentioned maybe today. Uh, oh, yeah. after uh, practice. Yep. Look, what what did we want, really? Like, I talked about him. He'd probably come out and talk and, you know, uh, softball everything and, and not really really say that much. But but as members of the media, what we really wanted was for him to just rip into talk it. That would have been, that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> that, that wasn't going to happen. But maybe he, maybe that's where he was going and maybe that was a good idea to take that, you know, to take that break and not talk to the media. You, you know, you guys, you've, you've played sports sports coach sports in minor hockey they have the 24 hour rule, oh yeah right? where if you're yeah, yeah. you're a parent and you're you're uh, you want to complain about your kids ice time or something the coach did give it 24 hours and then send, send your email and maybe maybe that's where uh, jt is coming uh, from uh, right now little time right. to cool off and then talk and respect if that's the case right yeah, <laughs> yeah, makes yeah. Sense. um and by yeah. the way that 24 hour rule never happens it never works <laughs> yeah. because Don't in the 25th well. yeah yeah, because in the twenty fifth hour they still send a seven page email. Not before that. <laughs> yeah. uh, what are the other stories from last night? Elias Pettersson hat trick with the empty net goal. Uh, his first hat trick in a long time since his rookie year. Second in league scoring right now. Uh, named the NHL's second star of the month. I mean, you're. I think Canucks fans are enjoying it. Obviously, the team is playing well, but. This guy just keeps adding more and more leverage to his contract case right now, right, with with him being an RFA uh, after this season. Rick, what are your sources telling you? Uh, uh, Rick, nothing. We're just going to – J.P. Barry smiling right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's doing cartwheels. He's doing cartwheels. He's doing cartwheels. He's doing I'd it. like to see well, that. Well, and he's got, he's got not only J.P. Barry, but it's Pat Brisson. I of mean, uh, Thomas, you know this. That's a powerful agency behind Pedersen and Hughes and – and, and, you know, they've done multitude of contracts of this nature. Uh, it's going to be a big number, guys. Uh, I don't care what anybody says. You, you know, Donnie and I talked about our poll question and is, you know, what are the comparables mm. for Pedersen if he wins uh, this year the Hart? Uh, but, Art uh, Ross. Art, uh, Art Ross. And it's, it, whatever the comparables are now, guys, in six months, it doesn't matter because it's going to be a whole new set of comparables. And um, I don't know why the Canucks didn't get it done in the summer. I, I think they should have given it a real good try because uh, Patterson and his agents bet on the player. The Canucks maybe wanted to know, did, can he do 100 points again? Well, I think we know the answer now, you know. So yeah. uh, that number, uh, whatever it is in the next few months. But here's another thing I was told this morning. Everybody relax. His UFA year is not this year. It's his RFA year. You know, his UFA year is still a year and a half away. You had to be told that this morning? (laughs) (laughs) I was told. 
to calm down, Thomas. It's not going to get done today. That's what I mean. They've got a ton of time, and the Canucks, the Canucks are telling people too. We have a ton of time to give. He's club but, controlled. But look at what the Devils did with Jack Hughes, who's yeah. leading the NHL in points. Yeah. Uh, eight years, eight million. Uh, you know they got on that, and it's a steal at this point. Yeah. Well, big time. Uh, but and Thomas, uh, we all know this. Uh, J.P. Barry told them in the last negotiation, he said, get, do Pedersen long-term, and they couldn't do it. And they're in this mess with him contract-wise because Erickson, uh, Beagle, Russell, uh, all that stuff, they had no cap money to do him long-term, and they're going to pay the price. Yep. Did Did you take the advice and calm down, Rick? You got a little heated there, so I wasn't <laughs> sure. You, you said well, somebody Drance, told you to he, calm down. Say, he pisses me off, Drance, all the time. 24-hour <laughs> rule. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Hour, hey, yeah. If I can keep away from Drance for twenty four hours, that that'd be the best twenty four <laughs> hours of my life. <laughs> be good be good for your blood pressure, but be bad for your program, right? You'd have less to yell about. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh I know you were reporting uh, yesterday, I believe as well, Rick, team working the phones in a big way, obviously off to a good start. They'd still like to do more, potentially add do you get a sense of, I mean, is this, you know, working to add around the margins or are they interested in doing something bigger even if they can? I know it's difficult, really difficult with the cap around the league to do uh, big moves right now. Look, they're 6-2-1, and one, guys. And if you can add and make it even better, why not? And they, they've been known. They, I was told they're one of the more active teams out there trying to do something. And uh, this uh, management team is, is they want to go, they want to get at it. You know, they want to get at it. Um, they believe. They believe. They, That's look, your standard answer nah, for every. They, when you have nothing going on, they're working the phones. That's nah, what he always says. What are you talking oh. about? It, it, I'm telling you, they're one of the more aggressive teams out there trying to get something done. Sorry, I also love when what, you go Grant's, from when 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 the report goes from working the phones, and then it's like, well, what would they like mm-hmm. to add? And it's like top six forward, top four defenseman. It's like, oh yeah, so they're an <laughs> NHL team. They're making phone calls and they want to add a top yeah. six forward and a top four defenseman like 31 other NHL they teams. Want, they want to get know. some good players. Canucks, still a team. Hmm. Calm down. Yeah, but it, just, Calm just down, the Rick. fact. But, <laughs> but, but Thomas, they don't have. Thomas. They're they, not rebuilding is what they you're They don't saying. have to be super aggressive right now, Thomas. The fact that you're hearing they are is something to me, right? Yeah, no, you're you know? right. You're right. Do, do you yeah, think they could they're sit really... back and enjoy this, but. Do you think they're keen to reward the group? Like, do you get a reward yeah. now for nine games? Well, I don't think it's rewarding. I think it's okay. just adding and can you know you you don't want to play catch up. Look at the last five years. Uh, by Christmas, they're basically out of it, right, guys? Mm. I mean, they got a they got a chance now to get ahead of the game for the first time in a long time. And look at their division. So many teams going yeah. south. Take advantage of it. That's the but I don't think rewarding is a them. bad That's idea. Awesome. I, I don't think rewarding is a bad idea, given what we talked about earlier. Yeah. You know, they want to sign Elias Pettersson. That's right. Like, show them that you're, you, you know, and again, I'm, I've been a rebuild guy, but if, if indeed that's your focus yeah. you know, now, yeah. uh, you know, show them that you, you're, you're serious. Show yeah. Elias Pettersson you're serious. You see what's happening that's down. Uh, this is a bad comparison, but that's maybe a not. I can get the by. Seahawks. Seahawks. The, the Seahawks, right? The, the, you know what, what they've done? Like, they're yep. all of a sudden, out of nowhere, leading the NFC West. They just made a big trade with the Giants yeah. for a but they're, defensive but they're, lineman. They're, they're, they're rewarding their team. But they're 50% through their season. You know, I mean, yeah. it's, one thing, it's one thing to have played 40 games and be like, we're going to mm-hmm. trade a second and Madden for Tyler Toffoli. You know, like, that's one thing. Mm-hmm. But to, to do it after 10, you know, I, I think an extension, something like that, that makes sense to me. Something that's like, we're in on this group. That makes sense to me, but but if if you're yeah, we're, we want to co- yeah. okay. you, you, yeah. If you're trading any sort of but, but, futures but, at six two and one with a with a sky high combined save percentage shooting percentage, you're courting disaster. Need to let this play out. Okay. A and further. they better not, they better not trade any uh, prospects, guys. They finally the pool's starting to look a little better. You got Lakara Mackey lighting it up. Mm-hmm. Baines is lighting it up. Uh, you got Biscavage in Ontario like lighting it up. Uh, you know what? I uh, go for it, huh? <laughs> Who? <laughs> what? Don't do this to him, uh, Biscavage. <laughs> Who? Close enough. Hey, so okay, Biscavage. Mr. Harvard Princeton. I'm never wrong. I know it all. <laughs> How do you pronounce it? Bruce Stevich. Huh? Bruce Stevich. Uh, dude, you know I've what? I was getting Polish that wrong heritage. too. That- I'm 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 ready oh, to go Bustavich. with that name. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I've I've been saying Buscavich and Taylor all week has been saying Buscavich. Well, who is Drance right? Look at all the people ah, criticizing Stavich. him. Come on. I talked to Bustavich. his coach we... Mike McKenzie in Kitchener. 
Okay. Well, we, I thought it was Biscavage. <laughs> Drance and I, we talked to him at the at the dev camp after he got drafted, and that's what he told us. Oh, it was also told my you. first. It yeah. was also my oh, first question he know? to him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it was also my first question to him in Nashville when he got to the pod. I said, "Before we start, will you say your last name?" You got to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Brustevich. Yeah. Well, Donnie know. and I can't get that Lub- uh, B- Bolivier right, so you might as well. Have <laughs> I can get that part right. I just can't get his first name right. I call him Nathan uh, Bavillier. You call him the- Nathan. Nathan. I, uh, yeah, it's just this. We're many- just having Nathan- luck. Nathan Bolivier. Bolivier. Nathan Bolivier. I mean, Bolivia yeah, yeah. is a country <laughs> yeah. in South America, boys. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, thank right. God you're perfect, Thomas. You know, you come across uh, Mr. Harvard, Princeton. I know it all. Perfect. Again, nice you're not. T- nice T-shirt, though. Again, we'll mention that. Yeah. Hey, Dodd, I don't know how you haven't ended said, up in a psychologist no, chair sitting listen, next to him every day. Listen, I think he's in one right now. I'm earning, yeah. my, I'm earning my salary. I'll tell you that much. All right. Doing this job. Yeah, big time. Uh, guys, we've gone off the rails here enough. I think uh, we, we should probably wrap it up here. Thanks for doing this, fellas. Uh, we'll catch up next week. Also, Rick, it's Prince Stone. Outstanding, guys. Outstanding. Prince Adios. Thanks so much. Lord. Bye. <laughs>